<laughs> well, well, speaking of uh, of exotic recipes, uh, tomatoes and the like, we have an exotic recipe, uh, as it were, for uh, for headlines as part three of our podcast this month. Uh, and this particular headline is coming from Turkey. The site uh, of Gobekli Tepe uh, is a very famous archaeological site in some respects for the wrong reasons in so much as it, it's attracted lots, lots of epi- epithets epithets rather which are um unproven for example this was humanity's first temple this kind of thing uh, but it is, nonetheless, it is nonetheless a fascinating archaeological site, which is on, uh, still under excavation. Uh, and this, uh, in the past week or so, we've seen a headline uh, largely pushed, uh, notably in Britain, by the Telegraph, which seems to be supporting, apparently always, a smoking gun, supposedly, for the Younger Dryas impact theory. Uh, now, can you possibly just, just talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, the story comes really from a, a paper published in a peer-reviewed academic journal by some engineers from, I think, Edinburgh University. Mm-hmm. This, and is, this is the, uh, <clears throat> the Mediterranean Archaeology and Archaeometry Journal. Indeed, and yeah. we can post the link to that because, uh, again, all credit to them, it's published on open access, so that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can actually have an informed conversation about it. Um, the paper basically is another iteration of, um, of catastrophe theory, really. That is the idea that catastrophic earth events, in this case a comet strike, uh, have an effect on the evolution of the planet. The most famous instance is probably the uh, mass extinction of the dinosaurs. Um, In this case, they hypothesized that a comet strike that was certainly visible from from Anatolia, basically, from Turkey, um, around about uh, 10950 BC, uh, BCE, had the effect of kick-starting farming and latterly urbanism in the Middle East. The site is, broadly speaking, at the top of what was traditionally called the Fertile Crescent, which was mm. supposedly the, the, the cradle of, of civilization. Certainly the, 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 the people will have heard of uh, the civilizations of Samaria and uh, the Hittites and Nineveh and the Babylonians. Mm. And this is so on. <clears throat> this is part of a, also uh, archaeologically speaking part of uh, revolution theory in that sense that, that there was a Neolithic revolution, uh, which the next big step would be, probably be the industrial revolution, this kind of thing. And the Neolithic revolution, according to some archaeologists, at some points in the history of this idea, was driven by climate change. Notably, for example, I think Gordon Child put forward a theory uh, quite a long time ago now, actually, about this. Which Indiana Jones's students would have read about it. He was a big fan of Gordon Child, he as was, we know. He was, he, according to Cradle, uh, the King of the Crystal Skull, yes. He rec- <laughs> Indy recommends Child. Um, but, of course, any archaeologist will know that they shouldn't lose their inner child. Oh. But anyway... <laughs> Let's put that to See what side. you did there. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, but the, the point is, is that, is that uh, this, this, this has been knocking around in that sense for a long time, and so looking for the cause of it uh, has has been a um, uh, for some people a bit of a mission. Uh, and so this this particular research uh, is looking at this 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 very famous site, and has been published uh, in a peer-reviewed journal, but interestingly by a, a pair of engineers from the University of Edinburgh. Now, there's a counterpoint to this story that was very quickly actually launched uh, as um, uh, there's a blog post, but also actually an accompanying audio stream. I'll put a link to that below. It's on the Archaeology Podcast Network, where uh, the uh, another uh, member of the, the Edinburgh University staff, an archaeologist who's actually dug at the site, um, essentially said, uh, well, well, you need to look, you need to do a bit more homework. Uh, that, that, that this was potentially circular reasoning, certainly selective in terms of the, the making uh, links between certain uh, sculpted animals and certain currently recognised star systems. So one of the big things was that, that the sky could be uh, could be mapped using these these constellations that they'd identified at the site. But uh, the question is, would would I don't know would the balloon constellation be the balloon constellation back then? You know all this kind of stuff. And uh, essentially, it's it's certainly from an archaeological perspective, it's 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 not it's not the best piece of research, uh, and yet it's interesting. And this, 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 the reason why I find, find it particularly curious is that this is what has floated to the top. This is the biggest story of the month. This is the one which is um, 
making impacts. Uh, you know, I've, I've had archaeologists, archaeologists, and also just general friends asking me if I'm going to be talking about it this month. Uh, this has made it into 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 the uh, the, the 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 conscience uh, and the consciousness of of especially for example the media. Now now, uh, now just before we we touch on that, and I'll let you comment on on the media approach. Uh, my first question is who I suppose uh, who did the peer review on this? Does this is this yet another example where possibly peer review needs to be a, a trained skill? I don't know about train skill i think certainly i mean yeah, yes it, in the sense that it's more than and we can argue about what it actually is but it's certainly that it, it's not just a um a review for publication that mm -hmm. might have you know some smart ass one-liners and and and, and 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 so on the kind of thing we read in the in, in the press when a new novel comes out or, or even a new factual book comes out or a tv series i think well, well, essentially, uh, but I mean, peer, peer review at its best. Sorry, I just just quickly. I, no, no, I, I would submit that, that the best peer review um, is, and this is a mainstay of the scientific method, is that someone who possibly doesn't like you even looks at your research and asks whether or not what your conclusions are actually sound. They look at the research. They don't review you. They don't review your style. They don't even review what, whether or not they they agree with the hypothesis. They review the method and the and the result. And that's critical. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'd add to that as well. I mean, certainly, I mean, my my experience of peer review is relatively limited. Um, but certainly, uh, I've approached it as something that is essentially constructive. Mm. It's not. Um, I mean, yes, you you always approach uh, uh, any theory with the idea of testing it to destruction. But it, it, you do that in a way that isn't destructive of the individual. You, you you play the ball, not the person. Yeah. And as exact, which I think maybe is another way of, what, of saying what you've just said. And, um, but the critical thing is that both of you have as much, or hopefully the reviewers have maybe even more knowledge of the area that you're writing about than you do, because it's a, I think at its best, it's a collaborative process. <coughs> because it, it, you, you can actually make points that maybe the author hasn't thought of, which will actually improve the work for everybody. Mm. And that's that's what it's for. Mm. It's, 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 it's first of all, is the methodology valid? And secondly, can it be made? Can the article be made better? And, and but and, they, it, it, go on. Sorry. And there, actually, this this is where I find it so interesting that a very a very quick review of the archaeology that's referenced compared to the archaeological site shows you that actually they are being deeply selective in terms of the yes. conclusion that they come to, uh, and so it makes me wonder. Uh, I don't want to get into sort of conspiracy theories about about this sort of thing, but it makes me wonder whether actually things like this slip through in order to maybe get, for example, the journal a bit more uh, reputation, a bit more, um, a few more readers, perhaps. I think that is a deeply cynical way of looking at it. It's far <laughs> from it to suggest that anybody in the media, even the academic media, is in any way cynical and just wanting click, click to produce clickbait. Um, because that would never happen, you know. No, but the archaeological site, uh, the archaeological site itself, um, Gobekli Tepe, is uh, is a famous one. Yeah, absolutely, and and, and I think um, the other thing about it is not just a famous site; it's a site that is also referenced a lot in fringe. I'm not, I'm not tended to, you know, I'm not even going to call it fringe archaeology because most of it's not archaeology. It's certainly not by any method that we'd recognise. Um, fringe historical theory Hancock um, where an author who isn't a specialist but um, puts a very long book list at the end of their book to make it look as though they've read a lot and, and, and also understood it um, points uh, puts, puts a theory um, that um, the you know the world was uh, humanity was the result of a visit by aliens in hmm. you know 12,000 BC at the end of the last close uh, the most recent <laughs> place you, you you know where I'm going with this. I, yeah, so, so 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 there is in that sense circular reasoning. There's also reasoning which is akin to a, uh, a house of cards, where if A and B are true, then C must be the case. You don't prove C; you just say it must be the case, and then you say if C is true, then D must be the case. And it, it, if if it's if it's subjected to any reasonable measure of of, of, of criticism, it falls apart. Um, so that you get that sort of stuff, but also I suppose just, just I suppose just coming bringing it back a little bit away from in that sense the easy target I guess uh, and, and so these broader questions in terms of publication and um, and authority. 
Um, there is this question of, uh, of engineers submitting this to an archaeological journal, and to what extent, I, won I wonder, uh, I, would, I would like to know more. It makes me wonder about their expertise, and, and, I, and also to what extent, I, I did, they, did, they, to what extent did they uh, think about uh, approaching the, archaeological, uh, the archaeology department on their doorstep? Well, we all know how good departments and universities are at talking to each other across disciplines, don't we? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, in, in, in all seriousness, I think I, look, I, I don't have a problem with anybody identifying as an archaeologist or an expert if they've got, but, but having a career in another field, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if they have got genuinely the expertise, knowledge, and methodology to be able to talk on a level playing field mm, mm. with people who are full-time in that sphere. Mm -hmm. But that presupposes, as part of that mental equipment that you go into that field carrying, that you know when you're writing a piece, who's the person to drop an email to to say, look, I've got this, would you look at a draft for me? Mm, you know, mm. I'm, 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 you know, you're the... You're, um, dear Professor Sanzo, you're, uh, as the subject expert, so, um, can, could I ask you to have a, a brief look at this paper, which I'm proposing? You know, it, it's that process of it. Of well, I, I get, as you were saying before, that we should, uh, fact checking that we should all go through when we when we when we're writing something. But also fact checking, but also as you were saying before, it is this is the best part of peer review. Yeah. Is that you? You ask them. You're asking someone else also to sort of cover your back. You know, in that exactly. sense. And, and in this instance, it didn't seem to happen. But I suppose just, just, just to, just to, the last part of this segment, I'd just like to just try and address the fact that now this is part of general consciousness. People are going to remember this great big story. Oh, yeah, Gobekli, Gobekli Tepe. That was the site where there was that meteor and it was the... It's going to be there. It's floating around now. And this really comes back to one of my bugbears, which, which I'm sure, uh, well, which I know you, you, you have a much more charitable perspective on. And that is the, the responsibility of the media to be informed about what it is that they're publicising, as opposed to just passing on a press release. Um, I, I said at the beginning of the segment that, you, that you'd, have, you'd have a moment just to talk about that. Uh, what, <laughs> what's your perspective on, I mean, how, how, respons <clears throat> how responsible, for example, is the Telegraph for having this picture of a meteorite and saying, you know, this, this must have wiped out the mammoth, this kind of thing in their article. It, it's, it's, a, it's a responsibility, surely. The responsibility of the editor of the Telegraph is to sell copies and get clicks on the website. Oh. Um, yes, yes. Now, at the same time, there are, you know, there's the NUJ code of conduct and the editor's code of conduct and all the rest of it. Um, now, you are public so long as you're publicising a theory, and that's all they have publicised, they publicise somebody's theory. Um, it's not a theory that's going to hurt you. know, they, they've not said, if you feed your newborn baby rat poison, it'll grow up big and strong. No, but, no, they, but, no, but, they... but they have said, ancient stone carvings confirm how comets struck Earth in 10950 BC, sparking the rise of civilizations. So that's their headline. And we're now on the record in another <coughs> to access public medium saying, actually, other, other, other people who are experts in the medium say that's actually probably not case and, um, you see, uh, but, and, and as you were just saying before is that not essentially fact checking wouldn't it have been great if they had done some fact checking and essentially gone okay change that from confirm to smoking gun at least <laughs> at least i think we have to accept that most journalists and particularly at the moment um are not specialists no. um and uh, and, and don't have the time or the resources to fully fact check and interrogate a story like that. They mm. get the press release or the, uh, uh, with the praise of the article, the abstract. They might not even read past the abstract. No, no. Um, and and to be fair, we've all been there. We've you know, all been there. You know, I've done that before when writing essays. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't think <coughs> we. The, the important thing is that we're still able to debate it and question it and 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 and, and, and so on. The, the the problems of the the medium uh, of the media rather with what has been called journalism, with just simply rewriting a press release as a story, 
Um, especially if it's got some nice pictures to go with it. And this one had some very nice pictures to go with it. Um, that's just a fact of life. And it, it occurs across the media. For, uh, it, uh, it's been, there's been particular criticism of it in the world of politics, for example, that mm. party, the party press release with a nice photo op has been published as a story. <coughs> uh, with no <coughs> questioning or interrogation. Mm. And, um, you know, it, you could argue that's actually far more damaging to the public to public life than somebody may be thinking that the mammoths were killed off by a, a comet hitting Turkey. Ah, uh, but it starts uh, um, somewhere. It starts somewhere. <laughs> it starts somewhere. If you're, if, yeah. you're, if you're misreporting scientific um, papers, that that's the equivalent of the, of seeing little Timmy torturing uh, um, uh, ants in the in the garden. One day they're going to do something worse. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 absolutely. And I, and I think, um, in a sense... If you want me to be really serious about mm -hmm. it, I'm a, I, 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 I um, yes, very concerned about this kind of uh, yeah, what has been famously called uh, fake news, uh, what we might like to call um, uh, Kellyanne Conway's alternative facts, if you like. The, you know, the, 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 this story about uh, about the comet strike <coughs> is. A, a, another set of alternative facts. Hmm. Um, they've got at least they've cited a chain of evidence. The fact that people can knock that chain of evidence down and are doing is all part of the game. And and hopefully, you know, that will be reported if not in the Telegraph, at least in other other sources. Yeah. And and also uh, and also for those, for really those that, sorry, sorry, and also for those who are interested in this story and in diligence, they'll probably do. These checkups, they'll come across people criticising it. Absolutely, and, yes, hopefully. Absolutely, if you yeah. do, you know, you 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 do that Google search. Other search engines are available, and hopefully, the, the alternative views will come up hmm. as well. Yeah. And again, I say, if if you are doing your due diligence, uh, which all of us should do when we're reading up on something that's purportedly factual, then yeah, we should read the alternatives as well. Yeah. So woe betide the student who puts this into their essay. That's all I can say. Okay, so <laughs> unless they do it critically, yeah. Well, yes, yes. Unless they criticise it exactly, uh, or or approaching fairly criticising in in, in 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 the context of an academically respectable review. Yes, yes, yes. Any more caveats? Oh, I think we've covered ourselves. Okay, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so. Um,